Hello, this is Ms. Moore, and today during chemistry, we're going to discuss molecular shapes. Today's essential question, how are the shapes of molecules determined? We'll start with the Vesper theory. The shapes and polarity of molecules are influenced by the number of bonded, um, or if you prefer, shared, and unbonded, or unshared, pairs of electrons. And this, this is explained by what we call the Vesper theory. The valence shell electron pair repulsion theory, or Vesper, can be used to determine the 3D arrangement of atoms in a molecule. So, Vesper theory is, you can predict the shape of a molecule by knowing the number of electron pairs around the central atom. Because unbonded or unshared electron pairs repel, because they're negatives and negatives don't really like other negatives, right? The molecular shape adjusts so that the valence electron pairs are as far apart from each other as possible. Okay? Unbonded pairs of electrons are called lone pairs or unshared pairs. And in many ways, the unbonded pairs, the lone pairs, or unshared pairs have a, the biggest influence on the shape of a molecule because of the electron repulsion. Okay, so let's determine molecular shape. How do we go about doing that? The very first thing, which unfortunately I did not put in the lecture, is that this is all dependent on the Lewis dot structure of the atom. So you've always got to start with drawing the Lewis dot structure. And so the steps. First of all, count the number of electron clouds surrounding the central atom. That's a really important part. We don't care about every electron cloud, just the clouds surrounding the central atom. So how do we, how do we get these electron cloud or um, I guess another way to put that is electron group. Okay, so each single or multiple bond counts as one electron group. Each non-bonding electron pair or unshared pairs counts as one electron group. And keep in mind that electron clouds are negative, so they will repel each other and remain as far apart as possible. Okay, let's discuss molecular shapes um, there are five of them we'll be talking about, and how to determine them by counting the number of electron groups around the central atom. All right, so the first shape is linear. Um, linear shape occurs when there are two electron groups surrounding the central atom. So the molecular shape will be linear if there are only two or three atoms in the molecule. So these two shapes on the right are linear. Um, in this case, there really is no central atom, um, but they look like a straight line, right? Linear. Then, if we look at this guy here on the right, you'll notice that there is the central atom, the carbon, and there are two electron groups, a, a double bond there and there. Um, that makes the molecular shape linear. And the, the angle between the two bonds, or the two electron groups, for a linear molecule is 180 degrees. That's as far apart as the two electron groups can get. The next shape is called trigonal planar. In the tri trigonal planar shape, there's going to be three electron groups surrounding the central atom. Um, and those electron groups will be in the form of bonds surrounding the central atom. There will be no lone pairs. Okay, so down below I show you a picture of a Lewis dot structure of um, boron trichloride. So you have the central atom in this case is going to be the boron. And there are three electron groups surrounding that boron. You've got the chlorine bond, the chlorine bond, and the chlorine bond. And you will note that there are no lone pairs 
huge part of trigonal planar. The angle between the three electron groups in a trigonal planar molecule is 120 degrees. Okay, the next shape we're going to discuss is pyramidal or trigonal pyramidal. Trigonal pyramidal shapes have four electron groups surrounding the central atom. And these electron groups are divided into three bonds and one lone pair. All right, so let's take a look at our shape down below. We've got our central atom, which is nitrogen, that's connected to, has three bonds, um, bonds to hydrogen, and our lone pair. Okay, if the lone pair and the three bonds were all equidistant from each other, then the bond angle between those would be 109.5 degrees. However, they are not equidistant from each other. So the actual bond angle between the three bonds, in this case um, hydrogen's bonded to nitrogen, is 107 degrees. And the reason that the angle is less than 109.5 degrees is because of these lone pairs that are pushing the other bonds away or closer together. And our next shape is called bent or angular. The bent or angular shape also has four electron groups surrounding the central atom. However, this time, the four electron groups are made up of two bonds and two lone pairs. So looking at our shape, down below we have our oxygen with two bonds to hydrogen and two lone pairs. Again, because there are four electron groups, if all four electron groups were equidistant, they would be at an angle of 109.5 degrees. However, again, they are not equidistant. These two lone pairs are pushing against each other, trying to get as far away from each other as possible, which then decreases the bond angle of the two bonds so their actual angle is 104.5 degrees. And our last shape for the day is tetrahedral. Tetrahedral also has four electron groups surrounding the central atom. But this time, um, the four groups, the four electron groups, are based on four bonds surrounding the central atom. So here we have carbon is our central atom connected to four hydrogens. And because there are no lone pairs or unshared pairs of electrons around the central atom, that means that the bond angle between all of the bonds, all of the surrounding electron groups, uh, um, is the most it could possibly be which is 109.5 degrees. So hopefully you can see from the last three examples that the unshared or the unbonded pairs actually take up significantly more space than the bonded pairs. And they really determine a lot of the molecule's shape. Okay. Let's quickly do a quick review of rules for predicting molecular shape. So step one is draw the Lewis dot structure. Then count the electron groups around the central atom. Apply the proper Vesper geometry, meaning linear, trigonal, planar, pyramidal, tetrahedral, or bent, and make sure you've accounted for all unbonded pairs. That's really all there is to predicting molecular shape. 
you need to know the names of the shapes, basically what they look like, and remember how many unshared or shared pairs go for a shape. And that's it. All right. Have a good one.